Ah, living in the country. There are so many rewards for rural property owners. You live where others vacation, your yard is a wildlife sanctuary, and you can enjoy lots of privacy. Hello, welcome to Yard Talk. I'm Greg Rayburn. And I'm Doug Rice. Rural landowners also face many challenges. Challenges with wildlife, property taxes, and concerns about flooding and fire. Managing acreage takes large amounts of time and effort. But King County has many resources available to help you steward large rural properties and save on tax bills. We also have tips for managing forests, keeping livestock healthy, and of course, for saving money. Let's start by checking out one of the coolest log cabins I've ever seen, the Vowels Residence near Duval. The Vowels Residence is a site harvested log home on nearly six acres of forest property near Duval. It's a wonderful example of green home improvements being used successfully in a rural area. After attending a green building conference two years ago, Mike Vowles found many wonderful ways to infuse gorgeous green design with universal design strategies. He created a forest stewardship plan to figure out what he had and what he would like his property to look like in the future. He used it as a kind of blueprint in stewarding his property. There's a little bit of a love affair between me and my property as far as just, you know, the habitat, the things living out here, and just, you know, the, the kind of the holistic system that's going on here. The system is an amazing blend of art, innovation, and purposeful habitat. These woody raccoons may be just decoration to greet visitors, but they live in a habitat tree designed to attract real wildlife. Then the trees where we literally cut the top out of the tree, uh, the purpose is to get in more sunlight but leave that tree body because then the bugs eventually move into that tree. And as soon as the bugs move in, then the woodpeckers start coming. And uh, in addition to that, as that tree starts decomposing, it becomes the place where the bats start moving in because the bats will go in and they'll live in the hole that the woodpecker created. So you've just got this system in place. And the nice thing is, is from our deck, we're sitting out here, we get to enjoy watching the show that we help create. Different critters find other homes here too, like the many habitat mounds, piles of hand-cleared underbrush left to break down naturally and provide food and homes for wildlife. And the other advantage to doing that is these piles of potentially combustible materials are isolated, so I don't have a combustible material laying around that can spread fire if we happen to have a fire problem out here. Mike has also put in a number of rain gardens and living roofs to help naturally filter the rain and runoff. He even has a bog garden. It's all about slowing down that water that's eventually trying to get to Puget Sound. I want to try and keep it here in my property, get it absorbed back into the ground. That's the purpose. Many elements in this home have more than one purpose. It's a study not only in art and green design, but in universal design. You see, Back in the 1970s, Mike Vowles was a champion freestyle skier. His specialty, aerial acrobatics. And, uh, so this was uh, one of the jumps I was doing, trying to win that Porsche. And then this was something that was uh, in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho at a competition. Mike did win a Porsche 914 and a host of other awards. But unfortunately, a ski accident changed that. Still, his wheelchair hasn't slowed him down much and what he's learned about mobility, he shares with others. What exactly is universal design? My home here has features that can work for uh, uh, young kids. Uh, it has features that could work for seniors. It has features that can work for uh, people with uh, disabilities, wheelchair users. So universal design is designing in such a way that it just works for all populations. This house has both steps and it's got what we, we call stepless grade changes and we like to not use the term ramp. You can move around the property using stepless grade changes and so in addition to serving somebody like myself who's a wheelchair user, it allows me to move our barbecue on wheels down there, it allows me to move our pressure washer around. Uh, when we're taking out our recycling containers, they're on wheels. Uh, the stepless grade changes being an element of universal design is just smart design that works for everybody. And Mike says a forest plan is also something that can work for everybody. 
It's a way to help you create the rural paradise you want and be a great steward of the land. If you'd like to learn more about how the Vowels design their fantastic home, visit our website and check out the link. Also, Doug has discovered a fantastic way to reduce your taxes. I hope it's legal. Of course it's legal, Greg. King County is providing some property tax relief for owners interested in voluntarily protecting resources on their land. Take a look around your property. What do you have? Maybe you have an old overgrown pasture full of weeds or over four acres of forest land you'd like to better manage. How about a creek or wetland that you'd like to plant with beautiful, low maintenance native plants? And just maybe you have a trail through your property that you'd like the public to use. All of these are examples of voluntary property practices that may make you eligible for a tax break. There are many different categories where you might qualify. If you have large areas of property you wish to protect, check out our website for more details. Need more validation? All the guests in this episode are enrolled in the program. Do you live on a horse property? It's a great way of life. But did you know that pollutants from horses can sometimes contaminate groundwater? Runoff can go to creeks, rivers, and eventually Puget Sound. Elaine Blickley runs an organization called Horses for Clean Water. We teach about ways to manage horses and livestock that are going to be good for the animals, for the health of the horses, as well as chore efficient and good for the productivity of the farm, as well as being good for the whole environment. I'm a big fan of composting. I just think it um, creates an awesome, very valuable finished product that's like black gold. I've had horse owners tell me that they think of picking up manure as harvesting a whole crop because in essence it is. The finished compost is just wonderful stuff for your pasture. What happens if you don't manage your manure is when we have rain and when the rainy season kicks back in is that the nutrients from the manure as well as the sediments can get washed off and you don't have to live near a creek or a pond or a wetlands for that to cause a problem. It can get into the surface water, it can potentially even get into your groundwater and can cause a, a drinking water problem for you. If you're not managing the mud, if you're not providing footing and having gutters and downspouts where we divert away the clean water, then eventually the ground is gonna get churned up, it's gonna get really muddy, and we have the potential once again from four nutrients to get washed off, nutrients from manure and from urine, as well as sediments from the topsoil, and again, that can get washed off into the surface waters and into the groundwater. Overgrazed pastures, the grass plants can no longer hold the soil in place and so we get soil erosion and you know if you're raising horses really what you are is a grass farmer and that soil is very valuable to you if you want to have nice pastures. For somebody who's um, just getting horses or livestock, um, one of the first things I like to suggest is that people uh, come to some of the classes that I offer through the King Conservation District. In King County, we teach a lot of classes through the Conservation District on mud, manure, pasture management. When it comes to preserving our environment, it really does take a village. The best way to be a good steward of the land is to share information with your neighbors. We teach and learn from each other. When you hear that term, quality of life, do your thoughts ever linger on something like this? Nine acres of rural northwest paradise right on the urban growth boundary line between the huge communities of Klohani and Issaquah Highlands. These landowners, or stewards, have managed to lovingly support their property's ecological value. Well, we're here with Jen and Jim, and you guys, I love what you've done to both protect this land and learn to live on it. Uh, can you 
t let's talk about what you've learned both from the land and for the land. Thanks, Doug, for inviting us to be on sure. Yard Talk. Well, when we first moved to this property in about 2002, we were real urbanites. And living here with the plants and animal communities that we share the land with has really taught us a lot about ourselves and about the natural world. Like respect for nature, living on the land you are faced with much more extremes. Here you are surrounded by life and death every day. Learning to live on the land, like how to take care of your well, dealing with power outages and being snowed in for days at a time is one thing. Learning how to live with the land is quite another. When we first moved here, I think we were under the impression that land just cared for itself. What I learned is that our native world is under constant assault from invasive weeds, surface water runoff, and garden chemicals. And our land has to be managed year round to keep it from turning into a monoculture of blackberries, scotch broom, and also to keep, keep the ponds healthy. It takes time to learn about your land, how to work with seasons, the tools that are needed, what resources are available to help in stewarding a big piece of property like this. Caring for our land is a family project, and it's developed into a larger community project over the years. So in working conscientiously on your own land and sustainably, what has this led to ultimately? When we started doing restoration and habitat improvements, such as removing scotch room and tansy ragwort and installing duck boxes for woodland ducks, we discovered that some projects were just too big for a single family. We did a few community work parties to tackle big projects together. Our community of about 12 families started a nonprofit to be eligible for county small change grants to do restoration and habitat improvement. We were able to share our learnings with other communities. Out of these meetings and discussions, Partnership for Rural King County, PRKC, was born. Now PARC is a grassroots consortium of residents, community associations, nonprofits, outdoor user groups, and educational agencies. And we all work together to preserve rural land and rural communities. PARC's role is in connecting landowners with resources and tools. So what kind of advice do you have for other rural landowners? Well, I recommend that landowners start by understanding what jurisdiction they're in, what state and county resources are available, and what nonprofits serve their area, like Park serves Eastern Rural King County. Well, thanks, guys, for the great tips you've given us today. It really goes to show that a few people working together can make a big difference. Because of the time and money involved with managing a large piece of property, the same strategies you use to care for land in the city might not work on your back 40. As a rural property owner, I've made my share of blunders, but I've learned a lot and hopefully can save you some time and headaches. Disturb your property as little as possible. When you remove trees, turn the soil, or clear the site, you create perfect opportunities for problems especially weeds. You may want to clear some land later, but wait until after step two. Develop a plan. This is really key. Following a plan might not be as much fun as firing up a backhoe or planting trees, but it's more important. Whether you want to have a more productive farm or forest, having a plan to follow makes a world of difference. By putting a plan on paper, you'll save time and money. Talk to experts. Experience counts. All of the rural landowners in this episode, including me, learned valuable ideas and tricks from others. Take the time to visit our website to find links to the many people that can offer you suggestions for solving your problems. Making a plan, disturbing your property as little as possible, and taking advantage of the expertise of others. These three tips can save you headaches and help you be a good steward of your property. We are all lucky to live and work in the Pacific Northwest. We know our rural land is precious and requires active management. But there are many resources available to help you. We share just a few with you today. To find out more, visit our website. That's at kingcounty.gov slash yardtalk.
Have a healthy garden. And a healthy family and planet too.